What it do, Drake T? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we go with German police versus American police culture shocks by Passport Two. Love this channel. And I'm excited to actually jump into this and see the differences. Before we do it, I'll make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh my God! There are some pretty big differences between the police in Germany and in the US, and today we're gonna take a closer look into why. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby, sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. So this is the second video I have made on differences between the German and American police. And in the last video, I did mention that I hate talking politics on YouTube, but when we're talking about the police, for a lot of people, this can't help but be a political subject. I think more Facts. so this is especially true in the US where the police have become such a hot button issue. So just like in the Facts. last video, for those of you that think that is what this video is, it's not. My last video was more of me talking about my personal and individual observations of police between the US and Germany through my my interactions and encounters with them in both countries. Yes, because I've had run-ins with police in both countries. And this <laughs> video is going to be the more interesting facts that I have learned about the two forces during my time living in both the US and Germany. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. Watch what you say to the police, eh? Maybe not in the US, eh? The very first thing that I must talk about is a very important difference that I actually technically botched up in my last video, I guess. So consider this a correction as well as the first difference between the two polices, and that is the phone number you call when you need the police. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today in my video. 911 or 112. Here's the police, in my view. Yeah, I technically mistakenly said 112 in the intro when I should have actually said 110, which would have then made my rhyme completely not work. But in <laughs> Germany, there are actually multiple different emergency numbers you would use depending on the type of emergency you're having. So it's not really? that the 112 number I said is just a random number, but that is actually the emergency number if you need an ambulance or the fire department. For the police, you should dial 110. Zero. And then there is also 116117 for on-call medical services for non-life-threatening medical needs. Having multiple different emergency numbers is of course different from the US where there is yeah. one single number for these emergency services and that is simply 911. But exactly. an American who is used to having just one single emergency number might think like me and say, well, with multiple emergency numbers in Germany, what happens if someone needs the police and accidentally dials the wrong emergency number because they have to think about all those different options and remember which one to call? Well, this is just two different options. Unless it's, it's just, all I saw was 112 and 110. <laughs> you had the bottom number, but that was for like non emergency medical purposes. So, emergency purposes only, it's all, there was only two numbers there. That doesn't seem very hard to me. Well, from what I have read, that technically wouldn't really be an issue because the person you would talk to would make sure you still got the emergency service you need. In fact, 112 became the single European emergency number in 1991 because prior, most European nations had their own numbers for emergencies that were different, and as Europeans started traveling more internationally, it was important they were easily able to reach emergency services without having to know a hundred different emergency numbers for different countries. And according to the European Commission, you can call 112 from fixed and mobile phones to contact any emergency service, an ambulance, the fire brigade, or the police. And a specially trained operator will answer any 112 call. The operator will either deal with the request directly or transfer the call to the most appropriate emergency service depending on the national organization of emergency services. Or here's another scenario. What happens if you are an American in Germany and you dial 911 out of habit? Well, mm. I'm not really going to test it out myself to see what happens, <laughs> but what I can tell you is that we took a first aid class last year and the German 
German first responder that taught the class assured us that if one were to dial 911, the call would automatically be redirected to the German emergency line. Now, I have also read online that this may only actually happen if you dial on a cell phone and it wouldn't patch through on a landline. But again, I'm not going to test it out and risk getting in trouble. But what about the opposite scenario? Say a German is in the US and accidentally dials 112 out of habit. According to mm. Krankenkasseinfo.de, among other sources I found with the same information, the so-called Euro Nordruf 112 is not only to be used universally in Europe, in North America, South America, Canada, Asia, parts of Africa, and Oceania, the emergency number 112 will redirect you to the phone number for emergencies that applies ah. there. I like that. I really like that. So no matter where you're at, you know what I'm saying, you can hit the emergency number that you're used to dialing and it should reroute you to the to the right person. You're getting, getting a hold of the right person who's going to put you in touch with whatever you need for your, whoever you need for your emergency. I like that. Is it a crime to watch this video and not hit the like and subscribe button if you're enjoying it? Technically, it I don't think so, but it should be. So if you don't mind, it's go a, ahead and smash those like and subscribe crime. buttons for me. Also, a real it's quick a shout crime. out to all of our patrons over on Patreon that support our channel. I really, really want you guys to know how much I appreciate you doing that. As I mentioned, talking about the police is a very hot button topic, especially in the US, where many might actually even ask what the purpose of the police actually is anyways these days. Well, the police will often like to try and tell you what their purpose is through a motto. In the US, the motto for a police force varies from department to department, but the most commonly adopted motto originally comes from the LA Police Department, and it is Sorry, to protect okay. and to serve. In no. Germany, it does seem a little more complicated. If you mm. ask a German what the motto of the police is, the motto you will hear most often is Die Polizei, dein Freund und Helfer. In English, the police, your friend and helper. What makes this mm. kind of complicated is the origin of this phrase. I found that this is a originally a phrase from the 1920s and then adopted by Heinrich Himmler, who pushed this phrase under the Nazis. I found an article oh, from 1988 wow. that explained, in the future, no one is supposed to say the police, your friend and helper anymore. At least not the really? police themselves, who have been happy to use it as a self-congratulatory adornment until now, because the slogan is historically prejudiced. Instead, I found that most police forces throughout Germany also have differing mottos like American police oh. departments do, and for our state of rheinland pfalz I found that they seem to like to use the motto Dienst für und mit dem Bürger, or service for and with the citizens. I like then, that. of course, there is the non-official slogan for the police for those that aren't particularly fans of the police that you see all over the place in both Germany and the US that I don't personally agree with, a cob, which the police in Germany are actually trying to turn on its head this year by making it a slogan for recruitment. <laughs> All cops are beautiful. <laughs> so is that what it really stood for? Or is, did it, a cop originally stand for something else and then they're just trying to flip the narrative of, of it? Uh, I have intrigued. <laughs> In the last video on police differences, we touched on the design of the police vehicles in each nation, as well as the differences in the sounds of the sirens utilized in both countries by the police. However, one difference we didn't touch on was the difference in the lights on the police vehicles. This actually is a very important difference to learn in the case that you see flashing lights behind you as you drive in both countries, because I can speak from experience that the first time I saw the flashing lights behind me in Germany, they didn't register to me immediately as an emergency vehicle because of how different they are from what I am used to emergency lights looking like in the US. Mm. So in the US, emergency vehicle lights depend on individual state statutes and extremetacticaldynamics.com very simply lays out these varying statutes on their website. If we look at Oklahoma, where we are from and are most used to seeing police emergency lights, we see that all authorized law enforcement vehicles in Oklahoma are required wow. to have red or blue lights that flash. Law enforcement agencies are also allowed to use a combination light setup that includes both red and blue lights that flash. Because of this- Most of the time it's the combination setup. Uh, well, in the two states, I've been uh, pulled over in Tennessee and I've been pulled over in Texas. And it's usually been the combination setup. 
I would think for most Americans, red and blue lights, but in particular, the red lights represent emergency vehicles or the police. However, an interesting thing I feel like I started noticing more and more in the years leading up to us moving to Germany was non-emergency vehicles starting to use similar, if not the same light schemes as police vehicles. For example, according to Oklahoma State statues for record trucks, in addition to the required amber rotating light, the wrecker may be equipped with a red or blue flashing light or a combination of red and blue flashing lights for use only at the scene of an emergency. Maybe even more confusingly, Oklahoma statues also allow rear-facing flashing red and blue lights on vehicles or machinery owned or operated by the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority, or by any county when engaged in the performance of emergency work on the construction or maintenance of highways. So sometimes you'll be driving down the highway, think you see an emergency vehicle up ahead, but as you pass, it is just a construction crew fixing potholes on a highway or something. Or another example of a non-emergency vehicle using a flashing red light are the famous American yellow school buses that are allowed to have flashing red yeah. lights to remind traffic around it to stop when loading or unloading children from the bus. So truly, the use of these blue and red lights really aren't all that strictly specific to just police vehicles or other emergency services in Oklahoma anymore. In Germany, rather than specifically red or the combination of blue and red lights being the color of choice for emergency vehicles, instead flashing blue lights are the norm. These flashing blue lights also tend to be a little lighter of a blue than what I am used to seeing in the US. According to German law, blue flashing lights together with the emergency horn may be used only when utmost haste is required to save human life or avert serious damage to health, avert a danger to public safety or order, pursue fugitives, or preserve significant property. And blue flashing lights alone may be used only by vehicles equipped with them and only to warn an accident or other emergency scenes during emergency operations or when escorting vehicles or close formations. So unlike, for example, in Oklahoma, where you may have construction vehicles with flashing blue and red lights, German law is very specific about only vehicles that belong to the police, military police, federal police, custom service, the fire department, ambulances, etc., being allowed to use these flashing blue lights. There is one other specific type of light on German police vehicles that I mentioned in our last video about police differences that I will also add here as it fits this subject, and that is the red letters that police vehicles have on their front and rear in Germany. As I was pulled over by the police in Germany for the first and only time, the police car quickly moved in front of me and they lit up a sign that read Bitte Folgen. However, as we were still new to Germany and my German skills were non-existent, I didn't know what this meant. But never fear, these signs conveniently translate to English and let me know I was to follow mm. them. Now, okay. I don't know that the- Yeah, I thank God that they translate like that, because yeah, I'd have been following like, what, what are they saying? What, what, what do they want? <laughs> uh, but I like the fact that they pull over in front of you and it's like, please follow instead of them just being behind you and you gotta make a choice to pull over and it's like what if i pull over in the wrong area and they're upset about that or pull over in a place like, no these cops get in front of you hey please follow uh makes life a lot easier these don't exist at all in the u.s but i can say that i had never seen them on police cars personally <laughs> One of the most difficult things for me to learn in Germany has to do with the German language, but maybe it actually has less to do with the language itself, but the cultural rules when it comes to speaking it. Specifically, I am referring to formally or informally addressing someone you don't know by using either du or sie. To quickly explain to those that don't speak German, in German, you have multiple different ways of saying the English word you. You would use du when talking with friends or family, for example, it is the equivalent of being on a first name basis with someone and is very informal. You use okay. Z to refer to someone you are not on a first name basis with, like teachers, workers in a store, or police officers, because this is the formal way to speak to someone and show them respect. In fact, we actually had many people warn us to never use the word do when talking with a police officer because if you do, you could get in major legal trouble. We're talking really? possibly jail time or at the very least huge fines for disrespecting a police officer by simply using the informal you rather than the 
formal you. Are this you was serious? something that blew my mind because you technically shouldn't get in trouble with police officers in the US for simply insulting them or not showing them respect because of our freedoms of speech rights. Yeah, they just say if you they would just uh be like that's off uh, that's officer or whatever. Hey, they they won't they can say something but there's no law that they can put you in jail. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Or anything for uh, I guess greeting them formally or greeting them informally instead of formally. It, police officers get disrespected a lot, but I feel like there's a lot of police officers that do stuff that warrants them being disrespected. So I don't know what side of the spectrum I fall on, but uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. Insulting someone is not illegal anywhere in this country. In fact, insulting someone is an act that is protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. In the US, insulting someone is not illegal anywhere in this country. Insults are protected by the First Amendment. One of the main reasons for the First Amendment was drafted was so people could be protected from penalization for expressing their opinions, disapproval, or criticism of others and of those in authoritative positions. In 2013, the United States Court of Appeals even decided it was perfectly legal to flip <laughs> the bird to a police officer. Now, just because you technically <clears throat> legally can insult police officers in the US, you can't then start to threaten a police officer yes. or incite violence yes. against the police officer as this kind of speech is not protected. And there is the possibility that if you insult a police officer and they are having a bad day, they could then scrutinize the situation a little more and possibly yep. try to find something else to get you in trouble yep. for since they can't technically penalize you for the insult itself. And, and they definitely will. And they definitely will. Of course, English lost this concept of formal and informal use long ago when it dropped the vowels and these. And because of my worldview based on my upbringing and culture, I couldn't imagine actually getting in legal trouble for doing something in my mind as small and petty as using the wrong you to a police officer. Yeah, so that's I crazy. did the research and here is what I found on this seemingly very gray area. In 2005, there was a famous case in which a German celebrity, Dieter Bohlen, found himself in an argument with a German police officer over a parking violation in Hamburg. During this interaction, Dieter was using the first name of the police officer and using the informal du for the word you rather than the formal Z. Dieter was supposed to be fined for this apparent insult and lack of respect for the police officer. However, the district judge refused to issue the penalty because Dieter is famous for talking informally to everyone, and the judge decided he wasn't being insulting, he was just simply being Dieter and talking to the police officer how he talks to everybody. So in this sense, we see that it wasn't the fact that simply addressing a police officer informally is a crime, but actually mm -hmm. insulting and not showing respect to a policeman is the real problem. However, unless you're a celebrity in which there yeah. are loads of public records showing that you address everybody informally, how could yeah. a normal person like you or me actually prove that and get away without having to pay the proposed fine for Dieter of up to 500 euros? And that's what I was gonna say. That's not fair. Cause how can you prove that I don't address everybody informally? Know what I'm saying? So I, that that's that's not fair. By the way, it doesn't just stop at a fine. Apparently, technically, repeat offenders could then be looking at years of jail time for insulting oh police officers. God. And remember when I mentioned that you can legally flip off police officers in the US? Well, in Germany, this is something that could land you a five thousand euro fine for doing like a district court find a driver for flipping the bird to a speed camera because it offended the police officer sitting in the car to see who made it this far into the video the random question oh the my is, god your mom or dad who let you get away with the most when you were a kid thanks so much for watching this video my mom i don't think it was the fact that they let me get away with just as a kid you test. Who can I get away with the most stuff with? And for me, it was it was more of a question: is who I who am I less afraid of? And that <laughs> that's what boiled down to my decision. But I was a good kid. I, I really didn't do much. Uh, so I really didn't do much to either one of them. But I knew that 
I was more afraid of my mom. I mean, I was more afraid of my dad than my mom. So if I was going to try to get away with something, it would be with my mom. Uh, but that was a dope video. That's all we got. I can't believe the cop insulted. I flipping off the speed camera. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. See what you need. Out.